This presentation is based on the book E-Learning and the Science of Instruction by Clark and Maya. The book focuses on the micro level of distance learning materials. How to present multimedia content to the learner. Their recommendations are based on extensive research over the past 25 years. In this presentation we will cover nine of their guidelines for material design. Although the authors mainly address on-screen delivery of ODL, their recommendations also apply to paper delivery of text and graphics. They call their guidelines principles. The first principle, the multimedia principle. Include both words, printed or audio, and graphics, rather than words alone. And the idea behind that is that uh, mentally representing material in words and pictures actually encourages active learning, which leads to deeper learning in turn. Um, this especially works with people who are being introduced to a topic. People are already very experienced in a certain topic. Um, they don't need this combination. Um, many people think that uh, adding graphics is a good idea anyway, whatever the context. Well, that's not uh, true, uh, as research has shown. Um, for example, just adding graphics for decorative uh, purposes um, can actually distract from learning. This is a text about explosive, and just to make the text more fancy, they introduced a picture. But actually there is no relation between this, this picture, this graphic, and the actual text. So this, in this case, uh, the graphic just distracts from the actual learning content, which is in the text only. Um, representational use of uh, graphics. Um, sometimes it's good, sometimes not. Um, just to give you an example. Um, in this case, you see here a text. And actually, what is said in the text is also represented in the graphics. This has no added value and therefore... Uh, actually distracts uh, the learner uh, from learning. Um, it may be good to use representational uh, use of graphics if the text explains uh, a concept or an artifact which is not known to the learner and then present uh, that artifact uh, in a graphic. The use of uh, relational graphics to show relations between two or more graphics like in this example, um, that's a good use of uh, using graphics. Same with organizational use of graphics to show the relationships between two or more elements. Uh, for example, in a flowchart, uh, that is also a good way of using graphics. Transformational use of uh, graphics. An example, it uh, depicts a certain process where in this case text is combined with graphics. And the interpretive use of graphics uh, to visualize uh, processes or relationships that are invisible in uh, the real world. Uh, for example, in this case, how does a heat pump work? The second uh, principle, the contiguity principle, that is to align words and corresponding graphics. The idea behind uh, this principle is that uh, you should not get confused by uh, text and graphics not matching or being too far apart from each other. Uh, this is especially risky with on-screen materials where on one screen you can have the text and then you have to scroll down for example uh, to see the graphic and then the relation between the text and the graphic is lost to the learner. An example of uh, how not to do it, uh, this example shows a procedure, step 1, step 2, step 3, step 4 uh, and then the graphics are below uh, but there's actually no clear relation between each of these numbered steps and to which graphics they belong. The correct way to uh, apply this principle with each step close to the description, the textual description add the corresponding graphics. The third principle, the modality principle, which states that uh, next to graphics present words as audio narration rather than on-screen text. Um, so if you want to explain something about the graphic, it's better to use audio than to use text, even if that text is uh, just next to the graphic. The reason for that is um, that if you confront a learner both with text and graphics about the same subject, um, and for example the text explaining about the graphic 
then you overload the learner's visual channel. If, however, you present a graphic and you have a, an explanation about the graphic in audio, then the learner can use two channels and that actually prevents mental overload. This applies specifically when the words actually explain the graphic. The fourth principle, the redundancy principle, is to explain visuals with words in audio or text and not both. Uh, as we saw in the previous uh, principle, uh, if you can choose between text and audio, audio is always better to explain visuals, but you should definitely not use both because that will confuse the learner because he or she will then start to compare the audio input with the visual input and that also uh, again leads to uh, a mental overload. However, to cater for different learning styles of learners, it may be an option for uh, certain learners to provide audio and graphics, uh, while others who are more uh, visually oriented uh, may prefer text and graphics. The fifth principle, the coherence principle, um, states that uh, adding too much interesting material can actually hurt learning. And the idea behind that, that if the graphics do not immediately contribute to learning itself, they may actually distract uh, from learning. The sixth principle, personalization principle, to use the conversational style and virtual coaches. Research has shown that uh, when people feel that they are being addressed personally, when they engage in a conversation, that is easier for them uh, to keep concentrated and that people work harder than in the case of simply receiving information and feeling that they are passive. This is often applied uh, through on-screen agents, but it also works with text and also academic content. Just to give you an example here, in this unit you will learn how to prepare your own pancakes. Difficult? Not at all. Segmentation and uh, pre-training principle to manage complexity uh, by breaking a lesson into parts. And the idea is that segmentation and pre-training and the idea is that uh, segmentation and pre-training in the key concepts of what is being learned actually reduces cognitive overload. And also of course the risk of missing out on uh, crucial details. The eighth principle, leveraging worked examples, which are step-by-step -step demonstrations. The idea is to use fading from those types of examples to full problems, meaning that you start either with a small part of the problem and then expand on it, um, or you start with a simple problem and then make it more complex uh, over time. Promote self-explanation. Have learners reason about example um, and have it explained to themselves uh, what, what the issue is about, what are the underlying issues, etc. Supplement it with uh, effective explanations, uh, meaning that uh, if you give an example, just giving the example itself uh, is not sufficient, but also provide explanations, the underlying components. Um, apply the multimedia principles that we uh, saw earlier and support learning transfer. Near transfer, to apply the learned steps uh, in a similar work context, and far transfer, to apply what has been learned to new contexts and problems. Finally, leveraging practice. Practice in online learning should, uh, just as in uh, normal learning, preferably mirror the job. Again here, explanatory feedback should be provided, which can be in the form of a manual or types of common mistakes uh, with explanations, uh, etc. Adapt the amount and the place uh, to the job uh, requirements, uh, meaning that uh, also here you can uh, start simple and then move to complex or start from small and move to a, a bigger uh, issue to be practiced. Again, apply the multimedia principles and finally make the transition from examples to practice gradually. This presentation is licensed under Creative Commons.